If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are starting with pediatric orthodontics. So the first question that should come in our mind is that why do we need to save the deciduous teeth? Why are they so important when eventually you will have to get rid of them and you will be gifted by a permanent dentition? So in our society, deciduous dentition is given the least importance because everybody knows that the primary dentition will eventually be replaced by the permanent dentition. But you know what? If we don't maintain the deciduous teeth in the healthy form and till the time they need to be present there, we will not get or there are less chances that we would get a proper permanent dentition. So actually, you are investing in your future, okay? By saving the primary teeth or by maintaining the primary teeth, we are, we are actually investing in future. That is, we are actually taking care of our permanent dentition indirectly. So here we can see that this is our primary dentition and below it, we have some permanent teeth which are going to erupt. Now these primary teeth, they kind of act as a mold or say they guide these permanent dentition to erupt into the correct position. So they are very important, you know. So the first aim of a dentist or of any individual who is concerned about his teeth is that he should maintain the deciduous dentition. So how do you maintain it? By caries control by parent counseling okay but in case you cannot maintain it or the patient came to you after the teeth has exfoliated or you know by caries it has been destroyed then what you need to do you need to maintain at least that space okay if you cannot maintain the teeth at least that space should be maintained because our permanent teeth which is below it it does not know whether it is the teeth above or you know a uh, any appliance above. So in short, we have to maintain that space either by maintaining the primary teeth in there or by placing some appliance there. Okay. So what we are doing, we are maintaining that space and that is the space maintainer. That appliance is called the space maintainer. So now we know why do we give space maintainer. And since we know that we are preventing the malocclusion from happening, we are actually preventing it that comes in a category called preventive orthodontic procedures okay so we have preventive orthodontics now let us suppose the primary teeth here was lost and the patient did not come to you and an appliance or any space maintainer wasn't given so in that case the teeth which is present near to it will drift and will fill up the space or will decrease the space. So in that case, if the patient comes to you and you find that the space is missing and the space should be there, now what you need to do? You need to create that space now, isn't it? Now creating that space is done by appliance called space regainer. And that space regaining thing which you are doing then, it will come under a category or a branch that is the interceptive orthodontics. Inter so in interceptive orthodontics, we are trying to eliminate any potential irregularities or malposition in the developing dentofacial complex. Remember, the malocclusion has yet not occurred, but the situation has been so that there is possibility that in future malocclusion can happen. So we are intercepting the procedure, the malocclusion before it is occurring and that is interceptive orthodontics all right so in interceptive orthodontics we have many other procedures in addition to space regaining like serial extraction muscle exercise and all the stuff so so for the introductory purpose this is it about the preventive and interceptive orthodontic now let us see what happens when a tooth is lost when a primary tooth is lost what happens so here in this diagram we can see that the maxillary first molar has been lost. So what will happen in that case? 
So the deciduous cuspid here, it will shift distally, if at all, in the first year only. And if you look here on this side, the first permanent molar and the second deciduous molar, it will shift measly. Now our first bicuspid, it erupts on the guidance of this mesial surface of the second deciduous molar. But as we know, this second deciduous molar is going measly. Therefore, on this guidance, this first bicuspid will also go measly and will lie close to the lateral incisor. Now, in this diagram, we see that there is loss of maxillary second molar. So, here, the permanent molar will shift measly. The cuspid and the first molar will shift distally. Now, if we keep the unerupted first and the second premolars in mind, the first premolar has an advantage over the second premolar because it erupts before the second one. Therefore, this first premolar will erupt, but our second premolar, it will be generally impacted because it won't get the space. So here we can see that this site where we had first deciduous molar, here the first premolar will erupt and there will be no space for the second premolar. Therefore, it will be impacted in such cases most probably okay now the third is there is loss of mandibular molar so if the first primary mandibular molar is lost the permanent molar and the second primary molar as told before it will tip forward it will go forward and if there is loss of second primary mandibular molar then the permanent molar will go forward now if both of these are lost, say the first and the second primary mandibular molar is lost, the permanent molar will tip forward and this canine, the primary canine, it will tip distally. So there will be impaction of bicuspids and also there will be midline shift. So we are talking about the loss of individual teeth here, okay? So now we know what happens when a teeth is lost and why is preserving primary teeth important. 